Hello, my name is Dylan Hudak. I'm a senior SE with Flexera Software, and today I'll be demonstrating Flexera's Corporate Software Inspector 7. First thing I'd like to point out is that CSI 7 is actually a SaaS based application that is facilitated via a 2 meg plugin which helps to make several components function. These are done through Internet Explorer, which is able to pass the API we need to use in order to publish into WSUS or the software update point, depending on your distribution method. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at this application. And what I'd like to start with is not what we're actually looking at now. We're looking at the dashboard, and we'll come back to that in just a little bit. But I'd like to talk about how we get the data before we talk about the data, because really gathering data is the number one function of this application and the main process that you're going to utilize in order to find out what's going on in your environment and to be able to take action against the data that's presented based on these scans. The first scan that I'm showing you today is called the quick scan, it's otherwise known as a network scan. This scan is powered by the plugin I mentioned before, which allows this host to originate a scan to a target machine or machines via the network, gather the information necessary, and bring that back for processing. We also have, and also facilitated via the plugin I mentioned, the ability to do inventory import out of the System Center software inventory. So if you happen to be collecting software inventory today with files star.exe, star.ocx, and star.dll, we can gather data directly from your backend database with just connect and select rights of the logged in user. We also have the ability to install a local agent on a target. This local agent weighs in at 800k and it's able to scan based on a frequency that you dictate during which it will run again on the frequency you dictate a scan which takes three to five minutes. That scan takes 20 meg of resources and around 1 to 2 percent of processor time for that duration of the scan. Which means that the impact of this agent on the target is very light and it shouldn't be prone to causing disturbance as some other agents may do as they are considerably heavier than this particular agent. And then we also have the PSI client and I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. It's a different interface, and the PSI client, I'd like to encourage anyone who's listening to this to go out and download this onto your home machine, if it's a Windows machine. The PSI client will scan for, show everything installed on your machine, and the items which are no longer currently up to date, or that rather are out of security specification and need to be updated in order to bring that security level to patched. PSI is free for the home consumer, but for CSI, you may utilize the PSI agent to gather information from your road warrior types who are more often outside of the office than they are in, which will enable you to then see what's going on with them. And through the process of, as I like to call it, automagic patching, every item on here except for the items listed as select language, if you choose to set it in such a way, will patch immediately and take care of that particular piece. So these items can actually be done in an automated fashion so that the endpoint may be taken care of without the user having any idea. PSI will help to bring the information back for those clients so that you can see what's going on on them when they do actually show up in the environment to make sure that they're doing uh, okay. After we have scanned, we will now be able to look at the data generated from those scans so that you can review your environment as it sits based on the most current scan you've done. So here I can see every machine that's ever been in my environment, the percent of patch, the last time those machines were touched, the aggregate data about those machines and secure end of life patch total applications installed, where they are in my environment and how I gather the data and via, as we call them, smart groups, you have the ability to create further filtering to make much more consistent data sets with what you're looking to express or what you're looking to review on your own so that you can ensure that the items are being attended to. So in this case I could look at percent to patch, how I gather the data, the last time they were reviewed, where they live in my environment, a hand-selected group of machines, or a specific operating system 
and a combination, if you choose to do so, of any of these that will bring forth the data that you're looking for. We also have product smart groups where the host will show you the application, I'm sorry, where the host will show you the target machines and the status of those machines. The product smart view will show you the applications that are installed, whether or not they're secure, and how many there are. This particular data set gives you much more versatility when it comes to creating your own specific data sets with these criteria as expressed so that you can very much dial into a specific piece that you are looking to either tell someone else or relate the data to yourself in the most efficient possible in the most efficient manner possible. And the last smart group we have is our advisory smart group. I find that both the host and product smart group are more operationally oriented. What's going on and how can I fix it? And this last, the advisory smart group is more of the what's going on and what does that mean to me? So I can see the advisories that have been discovered based on the threats in my environment. I can review those advisories when they were published. Was it a zero day? What's the criticality of that? How many vulnerabilities are fixed in this particular patch? Is there an update? How can they get to me and other information about the update so that I can address it in the best possible fashion that meets the criteria set forth either by my internal or out external compliance method? And the best thing, in my opinion, that you can do with this data, in addition to using it for reporting, is to be able to use it in a notification structure so that you can set the application up to tell you what's going on based on what you wanted it to show you. So in this case, let's use my predefined smart group recent advisories. This particular smart group from the advisory smart groups is anything discovered in my environment within the last 14 days. I would like to receive an email when my number of advisories increase and I'll run this query every day so that instead of coming in here and rooting through data just to find that there isn't anything for me to actually act upon at this particular time or nothing has changed this data will alert me based on the criteria expressed when there is a new advisory that has been discovered in my environment which will then bring this information to me directly so that I might act upon it much quicker and be able to take care of that. In addition, the smart groups are going to make your ability to create reports much more specific because you'll have drilled down to the data set you're looking to express as opposed to including some other more generic data that you would wish not to show in that particular report. So our reporting format has both a PDF and a CSV output and it's important because we have four report types that you can choose from in this particular generator. We have our executive summary and site level statistics which lend directly to the PDF type because they have graphical content which is best preserved in a PDF. And then we have our host level and product level which are both able to use the smart groups to help filter your data sets down to a smaller set and are more expressible in a CSV type because the quantity of data contained within will be much more robust than the other reports. So far we have gone through looking around, seeing what occurred, telling other people including yourself about it. Now let's see what we can do. These are the updates as discovered by the scan process. Some as recently as two hours ago, some as much as 20 days given machines that I haven't touched as frequently. And I can see the updates that I need to create based on those scans. So I know that I need to update my Adobe Acrobat Reader, so let's take a look at Adobe Acrobat Reader DC15. And with a double click, I will enter the with a double click, I will enter the wizard. And here you can see we have page one. We've got the name of the update we're creating, description detail for people using System Center, reference ID, which would also be expressed in System Center if you choose to create your own structure. 
And here with this particular update you see a host of additional installer parameters that you may choose which have been leveraged into the package by the vendor in addition to the silent switch. So you can take more items and bake it into this particular piece to customize it for your environment and have more features or less features depending on what you'd like to have. So I'm just going to remove a couple of items, turn on the clean install, and let's take a look at the actual guts of the package. Here's the package in JScript, here's our silent script, the other parameters that we elected to choose, the script which governs how the binary will function, and here we have the download of the actual item, but instead of being hosted by the vendor, it's hosted by dl.sakunia.com to make sure that that is available for you even if the vendor chooses to change their download location, our location will remain constant at dl.sakunia.com. The next step of package creation will be the applicability criteria. In this case, several of the criteria are actually expressed and they're more of a default and one is specifically created only by the scan face to make sure that these items are applicable to just your environment and nothing else. So the first question that's asked for applicability criteria is, is installed? Is it installed? Second question, is it above the minimum version as specified but less than the version being delivered to the target? Lastly, is it in this location as discovered during the scan phase. If it does not meet any of those criteria expressed there or any of these additional criteria which you may add, that item is not applicable to the target and will not be delivered. I may choose to alter some other criteria based on the needs of my environment and once I finish I can publish this item into WSUS or the software update point if we're using System Center. So let's take a look at that. I've already made this package. If I were delivering via WSUS, I would go in, find my package, go to approve, and I would see exactly what I would see in WSUS. I would approve these items based on where I would like them to go. They would then be distributed based on my group policy, and they would go to those target groups and hopefully update them if they need that item. If I were using System Center, I would go into my all software updates and after running a synchronization these items would be available for me to choose. Once they are delivered into the all software update location within System Center, I treat them as if they were anything else. So it's just as if they were a native item for System Center to deliver into the environment. This is now a native third party item which can be added into your already existing patch phase so that you may address these items in addition to those first party. So now let's just finish this up with a few other pieces of the application which help to uh, engage other folks within and some other features as well. To engage other people within the application you would create a user so that this person could function within the application based on how you choose to give them ability or to restrict their ability to use the application. You may use role based and a variety of restrictions to make sure the user you create can only do what you would like them to do. We also have the ability to scan and this is also brought to you by the plugin I mentioned at the beginning. You have the ability to scan the domain controller which allows you to look at the computer OUs and we can use that for filtering not only for user management purposes but also for filtering data and results to make very tidy data subsets. This is a cloud application, so being able to restrict where it can be accessed can be beneficial. By setting your external IP, you ensure that the people who utilize this application have to be either in the office or VPN'd in. And we're in the home stretch here. I have a few more items to talk about as I wrap this up, one of which will be live update. Many people do not scan every day and often a vendor may release an item shortly after you've scanned which means you wouldn't see it anyways. By activating live update the latest vulnerability intelligence information available will be applied to the last scan that you produced and it'll update the information accordingly if new information has come to light that can reflect upon the latest scan data from your environment. Collect network information. If you would like to 
restrict your users based on IP data within your environment, you need merely collect that information so that they can review that data. And then zombie files are leftover applications which have been discovered on a target by way of a trace file, but that trace file is part of a definition which means that that item is either end of life or insecure but being that it isn't truly installed, it's just a leftover file. This file really is just a zombie. It's a headless, brainless file, which is not connected to an installed application. This information will allow you to find out where they are and perhaps how they got there so that you can make sure that these don't occur or at least occur less frequency and less frequently in the future. We also have a feature where if you find an item in your environment which is not being scanned by this product, you may simply submit this information to us and after a short while we will be able to get back to you. It usually takes three business days or less to let you know if we were able to add this information to the product or not. And finally, as I stated in the beginning, I'm going to loop back into the dashboard. And what the dashboard really is, is I like to call it a Letterman style top 10 lists of items in your environment based on really the header for each one of these elements. Most critical, top 10 most critical items in the environment. Latest advisory, top 10 as far as relative to date that they were discovered or date that they were released by the vendor. A time frame over five weeks of how you've addressed a certain criticality of items. Insecure end of life, all sorts of data can be displayed here so when you log in it is the first thing you see and helps you to shape the way you engage with this application thereafter because you've been given the information you wanted to see as quickly as possible hoping to add to the efficiency of the use of this application. Again my name is Dylan Hudak, Senior SE for Flexera Software. I thank you for your time and look forward to speaking to you in the future. Have a great day. Thank you.